So, over the last few weeks, I was told um, I wasn't good enough for a specific thing. I was told um, there's no way uh, I'll preach for a long time. Um, a good friend of mine was told that his church was doomed to fail. Um, my sister was told that she'll never again be able to, to buy a house. Um, a child was told that since their parents got divorced, they would never be able to successfully have relationships. Um, a, a certain lady who will remain nameless got out of rehab. She did 90 days in rehab, got out, graduated from the program. Her family threw her a uh, celebration. Some family members didn't really know the, you know, the um, actual things that happened. There was alcohol at the celebration. She drank again, and she was told that you might as well pack it up, pack it in. You'll never get this recovery thing together. All these lies were told not by a human being, but by the enemy, by Satan himself whispering lies into our lives. Okay, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the war of our mind. We're going to talk about the war of our mind because truly that is what the enemy is after. Um, so let's pray and then we'll get right into it. Father God, thank you so much for these people in here, Lord. I just ask you to speak through me, Father, so we can talk about the lies that we've been told, Lord. The song says, when the lies speak louder than the truth. Remind us that we belong to you. You made us, you named us, Father. So just I ask you to speak through me um, as we go forth today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let's take a look at this verse. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks within himself, so is he. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. God cannot lie. So that is the truth. Two boys, South Central Los Angeles. One boy wants to be a sports scientist, wants to come up with new techniques. The other brother, young, 10 years old, doesn't know yet what he wants to do. They got a gang-banging dad. They got a gang-banging uncle. This is the culture they're in. This is all they know. Like if you own a, a construction company or, or your, your sons watch you um, go to the post office every day to deliver mail and come home, this is all they know. Kids think what they see the older people do is right. This is all they know. So it's being poured into them. You guys are going to be gangsters. You're going to be the biggest gangsters in L.A. The one brother, he takes that lie and it starts to manifest. So he goes to school. He's mimicking his uncles and his dad. He's acting like a gangster. The other brother doesn't accept that lie. He goes to school. He's studying hard because he knows what he wants to do. So he's believing what God said it can be. The other brother is believing the lies that are told to him. They're going about their lives like regular kids do. They go to school. They come home. The one brother studies. The other brother gets in trouble. He still listens to the lies. Don't worry about that. You should have fought him. You're going to be a gangster. The other brother's getting straight A's. Nobody cares because that's not their dynamic. So a stronghold is starting to develop in the brother's life that is a gangbanger. He doesn't know it. This is just life. So the lies are starting to manifest in the form of him being a, a, a powerful gang member. So Long story short, what ends up happening is their senior year of high school, the older brother commits a felony. Uh, I mean, the, the one brother commits a felony, goes to prison. The other brother graduates and goes to UCLA. So they were told the same lie, the same lie, their whole life. One accepted it, the lie, and one didn't. 
Okay, so the one brother thought, hey, I'm going to be a sports scientist. That's what he took. He thought that in his heart. The other brother, I'm going to be a gangster. He thought that in his heart. That is what he got. And we'll come back to them in a second. You don't have to own that. You don't have to own that. You don't have to own what, what the world puts on you. The only person who can name you is God. Just because you may feel like a victim of something, you don't have to own that. God doesn't call you a victim. There's nowhere where God says you're a victim. You have to walk in what God called you. And you, you, you know people with the stronghold of being a victim over their life because you can see them coming. You can see them coming. And when they get to you, it, their demeanor is usually something like, oh, oh, oh. And they're going to tell you something that they feel they've been victimized about. When the truth be told, everybody's got some stuff that they could hold on to and form a stronghold of being a victim. Nobody's upbringing, nobody's life is perfect. But God doesn't call you a victim. God calls you more than a conqueror. We have to speak lies. We have to speak truth to those lies that we're told. God didn't call you a victim. You know, winning doesn't always feel like winning. There, when I was... I don't know, 19, 20, I was with a young lady. God was removing that young lady from my life. I felt like I was losing. I'm, Lord, please, please don't let me lose her. I love her. God removed her. I thank God now that he removed her because had he not, I probably wouldn't be here in front of you with some of the things that she, she ended up getting into in her life. Winning doesn't always feel like winning until you can turn around and look back on it. So while we're walking around in a victim mentality, when really we're winning because God never called us a victim. He called us his sons, his daughters. We're powerful. God says we're more than a conqueror. That's what he calls us. But the enemy whispered things to us. He told Adam and Eve, you, you guys are naked. You, God comes, he says, who told you that you were naked? I didn't tell you that, and I speak truth. I didn't tell you you were naked. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were a victim? Who told you you were a gangster? Who told you you were a loser? God didn't speak that. If God didn't say it, it isn't the truth. You have to hold on to the words of God. And sometimes... The lies are in the form of an action. Sometimes it doesn't have to be spoke. Uh, uh, a rape or a trauma while you're young or a trauma while you're older can form a stronghold over your life too. I know some people who got robbed at gunpoint and they don't go outside anymore because of that one incident. They had 33 years of fairly good incidents on earth, and that one incident, now they don't go outside because of it. But in all honesty, we can all probably attach ourselves to something like that. There's a story that you probably could tell that would, everybody would be taken aback by, and you could form a stronghold around um, if you wanted to. The lies, the lies and the believing of those lies are what starts to form those strongholds. And we're going to get into that in a minute. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 10.3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Okay, we're walking around in our fleshly bodies, but that's not how we fight the war of the lies and the strongholds. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but mighty before God. Our weapons are spiritual. Mighty before God to casting down of the strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. 
casting down what somebody imagined about me and poured into my life. We're casting that down. We're casting down imaginations that aren't the truth, and we're holding on to what God calls us. And every high thing that is exalted against the knowledge of God. God says I'm not a victim. God says I'm more than a conqueror. I don't feel like that, though. But God says that, so God tells the truth. So we're coming against anything else and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay, imaginations and lies and every high thing. All these imaginations that somebody poured onto you and now you've grabbed them and you feel like that about yourself, we're casting those down. We're getting rid of those. We're getting rid of those strongholds. Let's talk about what strongholds are, what they're for. Strongholds are fortresses in the mind that have manifested in your life. And they're built around a lie from Satan. What does God call his children in the Bible? Mighty, more than a conqueror, wonderfully and marvelously, fearfully made. God took time forming you and making you and your individuality and things like that. He meant it when he made you. Those are the things that he says. He calls you his masterpiece. You're more beautiful than like the, the sunset from outer space. You're that beautiful. He cares about you that much. He put time into making you. God can only name you like Witt said last week. Only the manufacturer can name the product. Your, your ex-husband, your old boyfriend, your abusive parents, they can't name you. They can't name you at all. Only God can name you. All they can do is lie because that's what the enemy does. But only God can name you. Only God can name you. Sometimes, uh, we're, Heather's not here. Okay, good. Sometimes Heather will come to me and she'll say something about herself, and I'll say, who, t who told you that? I didn't, I didn't pour that into you. That's a lie. That's from Satan. That's from the enemy. Don't hold on to that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. When Heather first got um, cancer and she was about to start going to the, the treatment center, I remember she came to me one day and she was like, you know, like when we see on Facebook, and somebody will be at the cancer center, and then, like, every day they'll have a different person. She was like, that's not going to be me. People don't love me like that. These are her exact words. People don't love me like that. I said, who told you that? That isn't the truth. People love you a lot. People, you think people aren't going to be there? People are going to be there for you. But the enemy, he whispers these lies, and while they're, they seem crazy to, to people on the outside, to the person, they feel very real. You have to cast down, you have to cast down those lies. And so it turned out she had a bunch of people in there. One time she had too many people. They had to have people wait outside until another person came out. And the real blessing wasn't in the people in there to see Heather, it was the people in there who didn't have anybody coming to see them, they might have burned bridges, they might have had whatever issues, but because people were coming to see Heather, they got to pour into the folks that didn't have anybody coming along. So we can't believe those lies that the enemy tells us about our lives. We're fearfully and marvelously made by God for his purpose, and the enemy hates it. He hates it. He knows how powerful you are when you're walking in your purpose. But when you're not walking in your purpose, when you're walking like this, somebody needs a blessing from you that's over there and they see you in a, in a victim mentality, they're like, wait a minute, that's the person I'm, am I supposed to talk to them? Is that who? I don't know. I don't know. But when somebody sees you being a mighty warrior for God, despite what you're going through, then they can get some blessing out of that. Don't let the enemy hold you in that place of, of stillness. And, and it's a difference between like having a victim mentality and being clinically depressed. I know some clinically depressed people. My best friend in 2016 killed himself. Saw him all the time. 
talk to him all the time. What's up, Brian? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Good looking guy. He was one of those people that if he wanted to do it, he could do it. And you just are like, how'd, he, how'd you do that? Like, just a, a great person, outspoken, good looking, professional. He was a professional basketball player. Got a phone call from my ex-wife. I'm like, well, why are you calling me this early? Brian died. What do you mean Brian died? He killed himself. So there's a difference between clinically depressed and walking in a victim mentality because Brian probably blessed three people that day and went home and killed himself. Okay, so, so we have to be careful when we, when we um, confuse the two. All right, you're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. But we hear those lies, we form strongholds about them. You're fat, you're ugly, your dad was an alcoholic, so you're going to be an alcoholic. Your mom was crazy, so you're going to be crazy. The enemy makes darn sure that we continue to hear those lies, even when we're being successful. Even when we're being successful. You could have the, the company that you wanted and be sitting at your desk, and all you hear is, this company's going to crash and burn. You could have the job you went to college for, you suck at this job. You could have the wife you prayed for, you know you're not a good husband at all. That's his job, is to whisper and speak these lies to you because we are at war. We're at war. And as soon as we begin to understand that we're at war here on this earth, here in this earthly plane, it's a battlefield, but we already know that God already won the ultimate victory, but it's still a battlefield. And, and once we understand that, we can be able to say, hey, wait a minute. God didn't say that. You're just trying to use that as a weapon. The Bible says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. So you're just trying to use that as a weapon. And we have to know these things and we have to, we have to walk in these things. But the enemy will whisper something to us. And then sometimes, <clears throat> remember, we'll go back. The Bible says, who has a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And then we'll go back and we'll repeat what the enemy whispered to us, to someone. I, I, I'm nobody. I can't do that. I'm not going to be successful at that. Who told you that? The enemy told you that. Who told you that? My church isn't, isn't, isn't good. They, they don't love me there. They don't. Who told you that? We have to be careful the things that we let begin to form strongholds. We got to be careful. We have to speak the truth to that stuff. You're a nobody. I'm more than a conqueror. People might think, think you're crazy. Why what are you talking to yourself in Walmart? I'm more than a conqueror. You have to do it. You have to speak the truth to that lie. Let's look at Romans 8, 37. Now, this is what God says. We know the enemy says things to tear us down. This is what God says. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Jesus came and he died. He loves us. We are more than conquerors. Everybody in this room, you are more than a conqueror. You're not, you're not what's happened to you. You're not what they said about you. You're none of that. When God sees you, he sees more than a conqueror. And all you have to do is believe it and walk in it. And yes, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. We're celebrating Memorial Day. My uh, nephew's in the Air Force Academy. Some days are great. Some days are hard. My dad was in the Navy. Some days are great. Some days are hard. You're at war. It's going to be that way. But as long as you're walking, knowing that, Lord, it don't feel like I'm more than a conqueror, but you said it. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm not what they said I am. Those lies can speak so loud sometimes, so loud that it's all that you hear, all that you hear. It ran your credit. You've been trying to do good, not buying outlandish things, paying your bills on time, eating ramen noodles instead of uh, going to Alamo. They run your credit. Boom. Ah, it's not quite there yet. It's not. And you hear that? Six months, it's not quite there yet. Then you're like, man, I, I don't feel like more than a conqueror. The enemy told me I'm never going to get this. 
I'm starting to believe it. You have to come against that. No, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. God, if you've said it, I believe it. Let's talk about identification. What's your stronghold? Could be sex, could be lying, could be uh, pride, could be money, could be a substance, alcohol, drugs, um, could be being a victim, could be food. Some of us, we got a few of them, uh, if I'm being honest. What are your strongholds? Identify them. Depending on your past and things you've been through and held on to, what are your strongholds? You have to identify them. You have to say, okay, this is my stronghold, and own that this is your stronghold, and that's hard to do sometimes, because we still want to think that, you know, <clears throat> we're, we're, we're good, we're okay, and sometimes our strongholds are embarrassing, and so we don't really want to identify them as a stronghold, but a stronghold is something that is holding you in or holding you back. So what are those things? Identify them. Psalm 26, 2 says, test me, O Lord, try me, examine my heart and my mind. Ask the Lord. Okay, Father, I'm, I'm, some of us are really sure what our strongholds are. Some of you might not. Ask God to examine your heart. Ask him to point it out. And he will. Ask him to point it out. Okay? Because we can't fight something if we don't know what it is. We can't fight something if we don't know what it is. We have to identify these things. Okay? We have to identify them. When David took the sandwiches to his brothers on the battlefield, he didn't just walk out there and say, I got it. He heard some nonsense. He said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Identify him for me. Identify him for me so then I can know what I need to do about it. When something's wrong with, <coughs> with my truck, what do I do? I don't just ride around. No, I need somebody to identify the problem so then I can figure out what to do about it. We have to do the same thing about our strongholds. We can't fight something we can't identify. Sad day. It's Memorial Day weekend. Sad day. Everybody knows if you're of over the age of 19 or 20, you remember where you were when the Twin Towers fell. I remember where I was. I was walking into work, and I'm like, what movie y'all watching? Like, this ain't a movie. I'm like, it's this does not happen here. This, what are you talking about? So then everybody's glued. So then the next couple of days, you hear rumblings, but you're waiting. You're waiting for uh, the Secretary of, of the Navy. You're waiting for the Secretary of Defense to identify who did this to us. Who did this to us? You've got to identify the problem. Identify your stronghold. What is it? And always remember, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let's look at strongholds. Stronghold is something that's holding you back. It's holding you back. Back in the day of old Israel, these strongholds were to either um, hold the prisoners in. So like during battle, you know, during battle, that's a prime time for a prison escape. So the stronghold would hold the prisoners in and also keep the enemy out, okay? So we have to identify what is ours, what is ours. God gave us a tool, though, to do that. He gave us our mind. He gave us our powerful supercomputer, more powerful than any supercomputer ever invented. Some of us know how to use it a little bit more I know how intelligent I am. I'm not Elon uh, Musk intelligent. There's levels to it, but I still have a supercomputer, and God gave it to me, and I can identify these strongholds. It would be easier to wrestle against flesh and blood. 
You know how to fight flesh and blood. You inflict a wound. You wait for the, the flesh to be down, and then you win. But the battle of your mind, <coughs> it's a little harder than that. It's a different thing. And, like, I'm a science guy. If you know me, I'm a science guy. I know, ooh, you know, it's taboo, pastor, and science. I love it. But, I mean, think about, like, um, what was on the cover of our science books growing up. It was only three things. They didn't really think a lot about it. A comet, Saturn, or a microscope. Those three things were on our science books. And that's cool, because to me, those go with God. God created the universe. There's, there's comet, the comet and Saturn. The microscope is used to look at cells. God created the beings. There's God. So I I'm okay with that whenever somebody comes to me, oh, you think science? Yes, I do. You know, there's that pesky um, missing link, missing leak that, that they've been trying to find. A wise man told me this once. He said, if we came from monkeys, then why are monkeys still here? If we came from monkeys, why are, why are we still here? That's what I always say to people when I get caught up in the trap um, of that conversation. But the human mind is always making new connections, always. And it's making new connections based on the things you think in repetition and the things that you say in repetition. So when the Bible says renew your mind, literally, that's what you're doing. When you're constantly thinking and meditating about something, or when you're constantly saying something, that's why parents speak things over their their children's life in repetition. You keep doing it because you want your child's brain to keep hearing that positive thing. So it forms the connections based on that. So when the lie comes, your brain's already in the mode of, well, that's, that's not the truth because it's formed these connections. We have to make new connections to force that, that old stuff out. When you're with your, your spouse and you know, we have those moments where in our brain we think, man, I, I know I prayed for you, but it just, it just don't always feel like that. Get rid of that with, thank you, Lord, for my spouse. Thank you for this person. They're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Thank you, Lord. And it does something in your brain when you start to think that way. All of a sudden, the things that bothered you so much about them aren't bothering you as much anymore because you're forming new connections. It's almost like in sports, how, how they say in sports, hey, you have muscle memory. So if you shoot a thousand free throws, your muscle memory is going to eventually kick in and your brain's just going to automatically do it. So if you're thinking that way about things of your life, your brain's going to automatically do it, whether it's good or bad. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I, I know I'm not going to succeed. You've told yourself that for 10 years. Your brain actually thinks that, okay? So make sure that going forward, you're forming new connections because that tears down those strongholds that are over, over your life. Everything starts off as a thought. Everything. Everything. Let us make man in our own image. <clears throat> that was a thought. Let us make man in our own. I'm thinking about making man in our own image. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This is the truth. This comes from God. No matter if you've, if you've had 40 years of lies, start thinking differently. Start feeling differently. It's, it, it's going to happen because the Bible says so. Every million dollar idea started off as a thought, and every decision that sent somebody to prison started off as a thought. Your thoughts are powerful. And then you ever talk to somebody who's in prison, and they're just like, man, I wish I hadn't done that. They wish they hadn't manifested that thing that they thought about. Okay, your thoughts are powerful. Your thoughts are powerful because God created you to be a creator. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Be careful what you 
call yourself. Be careful what things you let others pour into you. Because you can do one or two things with those thoughts. You can own them, or you can rebuke them and dispose of them. The Bible tells us to take every thought captive. Not uh, thoughts every now and then. No, every thought captive. You have to either own it or dispose of it, because each thought comes from somewhere. Okay? Let's look at Corinthians 10.5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You can do this. You can actually do this. A thought comes in, did this come from God or not? No, it didn't come from God. It's a lie. It didn't come from God. It's not going to lead me to a good place. It didn't come from God. I'm disposing of it. I'm getting rid of it. Lord, help me get rid of that thought. Help that thought not come back. Help me see that thought coming from a mile away. And he'll do it. <clears throat> Paul has been through some things, and, and, and Paul, who is a big, big guy in the New Testament, Paul says this in Romans, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. So this is a struggle that humans have on this earth. And and we kick ourselves, man, why did I do that? Why did I do that? We have to grab those thoughts captive and figure out immediately what we're going to do with them. What we're going to do with them. And we have to understand that we are in a war. We're going to pray in just a little bit. And when we pray, the enemy's going to be listening to us pray. It's going to say, huh, okay, they, I, think, I think they're gassed up a little bit. Look, take a look at this picture. You are at war. You are at war. Now, thankfully, these guys, um, this is a think tank, the United States military joint branches. Now, when we're praying and God is releasing something spiritually, the enemy, Satan, has a think tank too. And at the same time, They're thinking things up. Okay, okay, we got to do something in the natural to combat what just happened in the spiritual. There is a war going on for your mind, and it's very real. I'll give you an example. You ever went to church, and you felt great in church. It was one of those messages that hit you. You felt good. You're like, look, I'm ready. Point me to, I can go preach the, the doors off hell the way I feel. Send me out there. Send me to the hood. I'm about to save some people today. Send me out there, and you just feel great. And then you get in the car. You don't get to the stop sign before you and your spouse are arguing. You don't get to the stop sign before one of your kids did something dumb, and you don't know, well, how'd you even think to do something that dumb? You are at war. Whenever you hear it, it's without fail. Whenever you hear a message and you feel like that, you might get to that stop sign. You won't get home before the argument starts. It'd be so tiny. What do you want to eat? Well, I don't know. How come you never know what you want to eat? Like you ain't go to church at all, eventually, because you are at war. Those, those guys, Satan's army is strategizing. Okay, all right. What's the easiest way to get to Daryl? What's the easiest way to get to Heather? You saw that message you heard? They, they really are going to do that. They're really going to be better now. No, 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 no. Do something. Get, get him a flat tire so he can forget all that stuff. Do something. You are at war. It is legitimate. It is for real. The quicker we understand it and know it, the better off we'll be. So when you get to the stop sign and your, your kid throws the water bottle out the window, you just, oh, that's no big deal. Let me go get this water bottle from you. I'll rebuke you, Satan. Flee from me. Here you go, son. And you keep it moving. You are at war. When the enemy's whispering those things, you're nobody. You know what happened in the last one. That's what's going to happen in this one. You are at war. And we can win this war. We know ultimately when we leave our earthly bodies, we win this war. But we can win here too in segments, in increments, take those thoughts captive. 
we have to renew our minds. We have to renew our minds daily. We have to renew our minds with, with new thinking, new speaking, new thought process. For some of us, I used to uh, listen to a lot of hip-hop and alternative. And unfortunately, sometimes hip-hop and alternative has a lot of violence. And you have to be careful the things that you hear inside your mind because you might not even be a violent person. But you hear enough stuff and all of a sudden the person who bumped into you where you would normally just be like, oh, no, no, no worries. You're like, yo, why are you bumping it? We have to be careful the things that we see. Some of us shouldn't watch movies where there might be some sexual content because that might be a struggle of yours. So we have to stop doing certain things so we can renew our mind. And over time, what will happen is you'll be like, man, I don't even know how I even used to to do that, because your mind has been renewed, but it takes time, okay? It takes time. You got to remember, no lie was ever told until the enemy told that first lie. There wasn't any lies. The enemy's the author of lies. He's going to lie to you all the time. He's going to lie to you all the time to get you to, to do things contrary to who God called you to be. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. So with being new and renewing your mind, you can tear down those strongholds. You have new mercies and new grace every single morning. Whatever, whatever lies and whispers you listened to yesterday, guess what? It's a new day. You don't have to listen to them today. You can take those thoughts captive. Is this from God? No, no, God said I'm more than a conqueror. God said I'm marvelously made, but he, the enemy told me this. The enemy spoke through him, and he told me this, but that's not true because God who created the universe said this. I rebuke that thought. Renew your mind. Renew your mind. I will be successful. I'm blessed and highly favored by God. You're ugly. God didn't call me ugly. God said I'm I'm beautiful. God puts me on a on a on a on a pedestal. He says I'm 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 gorgeous. I'm wonderful. God doesn't call me fat. God says, I look within. Man looks on outside. Man, man thinks that their thought process is filthy rags. I am God. I created you. You're gorgeous. You're beautiful. Now, you're, you know what? You're right. I am. How are you doing today? Do you need some help with anything? Bless people. But when we walk around like a, a victim, you, you, can't, you can't bless someone. We are who God said that we are. Grab captive of those thoughts. When your mind is renewed, you got to do th- new things. You have to hear different things. You have to do things that you've never done so you're not who you always were. We're giving you guys an opportunity these next two weeks um, to sign up for a crew. Like, like Whit said earlier, we believe it's better to do life and walk through life together as opposed to just the hour that we have in these roles. And I tell guys all the time, I was that guy who was like, I'm not joining no, no, there were groups back there. I'm not joining a group. I don't, I don't want to, I'd rather be at home. Groups changed my life to have other men going through the same things that I'm going through, battling against the same um, thoughts that I have, bouncing thoughts off each other, praying for each other in, in, in hard times, Helping each other with things when times are hard. Somebody might be sick today. Somebody might be sick next year. Helping each other walk through those things together. There's people that are going to be out there in the lobby at the iPads after service. You could get signed up for a crew. People who love you, who want to walk with you through that. Renew your mind. Make new contacts. Take those thoughts captive. Identify your stronghold. And I'll leave you with this. 
the one brother graduated UCLA. Um, he became a, a sports psychologist, okay? The other brother did 11 years in Lompoc. But during those 11 years, the other brother would drive up to see him and pour into him who God said he was. Pour into him. You're more than a conqueror. Okay, you had this bad moment. The brother in prison started to renew his mind, form new connections. He started to think about the things that he liked outside of game banging. Eleven years of, of this thought process of renewing his mind. When he got out, the brother who's the doctor helped him get started in a small trucking company. Now his trucking company is highly successful and he helps people come out of prison into a new life. You see, God doesn't keep us in those places. When we renew our mind, we expand and become who God wants us to be. Grab those thoughts captive. There's somebody out there who is above every lie you've ever been told. His name is Jesus Christ. And he came here for us. He didn't have to. He came and became thirst. He's the living water. He's the bread of life. He came here and became hungry to go through everything that we had to go through on this earth. He did that. He went through that. He was tested. He was tempted. He was beaten. He was lied on. He was murdered. All because of us. Because of us and the lies that are told against you from the enemy. Grab those thoughts captive. You're more than that. If you haven't yet had an opportunity to know Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior, we want to give you that opportunity. If you've been feeling him pressing into your heart, you, you know there's something calling you. You feel it. You feel it has brought you here today. We want to give you that opportunity right now. Just bow your head. Father God, thank you. Lord, for, for getting us to a place, a moment of clarity, Lord. And if we're not in a moment of clarity, just a moment to know that you are God. And you came and you died for our sins. And you rose on the third day with all power in your hands, with the keys to death and Hades, the keys to every lie that the enemy tells us in your hands, Father. We just love you and we thank you, Lord. Come into our hearts and make us new. Holy Spirit, guide us. Guide us through life. We thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.